Pizza. What the heck? It's like TIE fighters flying over. As it turns out, that's no moon. Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek. We are out at the field. We're taking a look at the new E-Flight F-16 80 millimeter EDF, the Thunderbirds version. I'm just gonna address kind of what's different in this release versus their original release. The assembly is all very much the same. So in terms of what's different, of course, the obvious one, the paint scheme, this is painted white. There's no bare foam here, which is fantastic. Uh, the colors are really spot on they look really good and the airplane looks awesome in the air it's it pops real nicely especially against the blue sky the biggest one is it now comes with an eight channel receiver and also uh, the as3x is set up out of the box for the flapperons uh, and so what that means is they have preset the ailerons on two separate channels uh, and so as a result you can set flapperons i have taken that a step Further, because having flown flapperons only, uh, I wasn't a big fan of that because you end up losing roll control uh, that I didn't like, especially when you're on the landings. So you've got spare channels here. And so to augment the roll, I'm adding in tailorons as well. Uh, and so the two elevator servos come into a Y harness into a single channel in the receiver. Well. All you gotta do is separate those out, set them on separate channels, and I'll talk through the, the mixing and what I did here in a second. But for up and away flying, I am aileron elevator only uh, because I like how the airplane flies that way. Uh, and so when I drop the flapperons now, I now get tail control to help augment the roll when I've got the cambered flapperons. Uh, and so what that does is help bring back the roll control that you might otherwise lose uh, if you camber the flaperons and don't add that. Now in terms of the mixing that I've done, because there is the eight channel receiver and it's already set up for flaperons, all you have to do is set up your tails only. And so your, your configuration ends up being one aileron, one flap, and then dual elevators. Uh, and so then you set your elevators into the two separate channels uh, and then to get the tailoron control with the flapperons down um, i have that tied to my flap switch it's just an aileron to left elevator mix uh, and so then i've got the rate at 100 percent and so when i do that again it's tied to my flap switch so this way when I drop the flapperons, then I get the roll control at the tails too. And so it ended up being really simple to do in this model because a lot of the stuff is preset for you. Uh, and so then the other thing is I'm at 100% all around on the controls, but when I drop the flapperons, I actually reduce the rate on the roll down to 85% because I found it actually, there was too much control at the tail. And so that got it to a perfect feel. So it doesn't feel any different with the flapperons down or flaperons up. Otherwise, in terms of the, the batteries, uh, I have flown these with 5000s, 6250s, 7000s. Uh, my preference is to fly it with a 6000-ish pack. It's kind of the best blend between the 5000, which is pretty short flight times, and then the 7000, which is pretty heavy. Uh, and so, in the model, I've got the battery pushed most of the way back uh, and so that gives a really good CG. If you were to look at the top of the airplane, there's the plastic capture for the wing. The last third of that is where the, the CG falls out and I'll give you the actual dimension. I think that covers most of the differences. It's really awesome they've got the eight channel receiver in here. So it gives you all kinds of options. You don't have to make an additional purchase to do that. One last thing I do want to mention, I did install, of course, one of my center burner afterburners. Uh, it's a 32 millimeter in runner system, and it is set up on a separate channel uh, because due to the presence of the smart telemetry, uh, it does have to be set on a separate channel because the communication type changes. Uh, and so you've got the spare channels in here, it's no big deal at all. Uh, and so otherwise, you know, installing it into the airframe, you have to pull the fan out Place the tail cone onto the motor itself. It just clamps in place with three set screws, uh, and then you drop it back in and you get it all set up, and uh, it looks awesome. It, it, it's such a nice addition to the airplane. It really adds a lot of realism to it. Uh, and so, I think that's the heart of it. 
Uh, let's take this out to the runway. We'll give you guys a flight, then we'll come back and wrap this up. Forgot, reverse thrust is a thing on this. I probably should set it up. <laughs> there we have the E-Flight 80 millimeter F-16 Thunderbird Beautiful looking airplane. I really like the Thunderbird scheme on the airframe. It pops in the air, uh, and so it looks fantastic. Painted white. It's... <laughs> Was that in frame? Yes. <laughs> the, the risks. Yeah. What, am, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I really like how these F-16s fly. They're really fun. They're agile, and so you can do a lot of stuff with them. There we have it. Be sure to check out this next video, and until next time, I'll see you at the video.